The Combine Harvester makes the process of gathering crops more effective than ever before. But just how and why were they introduced? Their history obviously comes from man's natural need to gather food. The name is a combination of all the functions a combine produces. You know, obviously there's a lot of oats and a lot of barley. So the need to gather it all in quite quickly and efficiently um, was quite pressing. Some of the functions a combine completes are reaping, which is the simple cut and gathering of crops. Threshing, where the grain is loosened in order of separating the edible part of the grain. And winnowing where the remaining mixture is launched into the air so that the lighter chaff blows away while the heavier grains fall back down for recovery. The first step on the ladder of the combine evolution was a Scotsman called Patrick Bell in 1825 who created the first reaper. From this, we then saw the addition of other methods like threshers, this is when we began to see the mixture of harvesting processes being combined together, which saw the increase of productivity. In the mid-1830s, the first combine was invented by Hiram Moore. These early combines were usually driven by horses. However, it took several decades before the combine became a common sight. And really, as America grew, you start to see people using this kind of machinery more. Obviously, land, ranches, farms got bigger, crops got much, much bigger, and the work of 10, 15 men could be done by one unit. So it was really around the 1920s when you see the evolution of the motor industry, trucks would be adapted, and eventually that kind of technology would move across to the harvester. Most combines are now equipped with comfortable seating and full air conditioning. The inside of the combine can also be slightly pressurised, which does not allow dust and dirt to come in. But just how are these wicked inventions made? Here at Class, we are building combines since the 1920s. The latest uh, product that we have, our heavy product line, is the Lexion Combine. The Lexion Combine got introduced in 1959. Since then, we have produced here in Hasewinkel more than 50,000 combines. Once all of the cut metal parts have been delivered to the assembly line, the production of the main body of the combine harvester can begin. This will become the core of the machine, housing the all-important reel. This reel will slowly rotate and push the crops towards the cutter. It takes for, for a combine between, on the Lexion line, in the assembly lines, it takes between 80 hours and 120 hours for a machine to assemble them. As well as this, the fan box and the sieve box are assembled. This fan box will blow the crops through the combine harvester. The sieve box is vital as it separates the grain from the crop. Once this unit is complete, it is carried to the main assembly line. On this line, all the components that will make the combine harvester work come together. Axles are bolted to the body and wheels are fitted to the axle. As a sub-assembly process, the highly powerful engine is then fitted to its cooling box. This can then be added to the combine harvester on the main assembly line. The rotor housing for the combine can then be assembled with the cleaning box. These modern day combines are able to clean the grain as they process it. And this has become a vital function of the machines. At this stage, all of the belts that will give the combine its drive are fitted. These will spin the rotors amongst other functions, such as driving the grain elevator. The pace is picking up now, and our combine harvester is coming together nicely. As it moves down the line, with parts constantly being fitted with great speed and precision, the grain tank is fitted to the machine, as well as the cab. The cab is where the combine harvester operator will sit and has access to all the combine's functions. It is raised in a high position and is mainly transparent to give the operator a wide field of view. Throughout this whole production process, we have uh, several, we call them quality gates and quality checks. So we make sure that one area only delivers good quality to the next area. 
the hydraulics and the combine harvester are fitted here too. Many of the functions of the machine are powered via hydraulic oil, such as the hoses and feeder house. Along with this, the engineers assemble the clean grain elevator. When the combine harvester is operating, the clean grain elevator will carry the grain to the grain tank, where it can be stored. In this basic assembly, we put all the functions of the machine together. So at the end of this basic assembly, you could use the combine and go into the field. The assembly process isn't far off completion now, and the first testing process can begin. During this test, the engine is powered up for the first time, and the revs per minute are analyzed. The hydraulic system is tested, as well as the grain and feeder systems of the machine. The second area is the test area, where the machine gets started the first time. We are testing all the functions. And then we are going into the final assembly. From here, only minor assembly actions are needed, such as final electronics fittings. The reason why the, why the test area is located in the middle is that this way it is easier to test all the functions or to do repairs. This combine harvester won't get too far without its main wheels though. Once these have been fitted, the combine can undergo its final testing. This is an extremely thorough process that enables the engineer to know that their machine is faultless. With final testing complete, the combine harvester is ready to be put to work on fields and farms worldwide. Combine harvesters, truly a wicked invention.